Hi everybody, Mary O'Keefe here from the European Pain Federation EFIC. Today I'm joined by Vania Upkarian to give you a teaser of his talk at the 2022 EFIC Congress. So Vania, thanks for agreeing to be interviewed. Uh, my pleasure, thank you. Hi Mary. Hi, <laughs> do you want to start off by introducing yourself, please? Sure. Well, I'm a neuroscientist. In fact, my original training is in electrical engineering. I've been doing research in the field of acute and chronic pain for multiple decades. Um, we've been studying brain properties of people with chronic pain for multiple decades. And you know, these studies have uh, I think uh, resulted in important new ideas about specifically how much uh, brain circuitry in, uh, contributes to both the risk and development and maintenance of chronic pain and the relative contribution of nociceptive signal versus brain circuitry and how they interact remains a current ongoing exciting part of our research. Um, there are many other directions that we are currently doing, but uh, let's just focus on, on this uh, on this topic for the time being. Yeah. Great. And what will you focus on at the EFIC Congress next year? So my main focus on of my lecture, although it's going to change depending on when and how the the event happens in many ways, I suppose. It will be how to translate these scientific knowledge, which I think is now substantial and quite convincing and quite solid that many of us have been pursuing over the last 20 years, how to translate that into clinical applicability. And, in, and at the same time, how to uh, translate this type of knowledge into uh, a faster, more clinically useful um, scientific endeavor at the same time. So, so in a sense, I want to discuss this idea that, that we have been pursuing that uh, remote um, uh, uh, internet-based um, uh, management of chronic pain patients may be an ideal way of enhancing both clinical care and, and promoting and accelerating science of the clinical care itself. That's the general idea that I would like to develop, and which is not uh, to develop and probably even hopefully even show some data by, by then from the, the startup that I have been involved in over the last now almost three years, actually. Great. So the first question I have is, what are the main findings about chronic pain that you feel we need to translate into practice? What are the things that may be the most exciting developments or things we know that are slow well, to translate? Right. I mean, it's, it's kind of very straightforward and simple in a sense that what we have, we probably pioneered, but now many other laboratories have shown complementary data, both in human studies as well as in animal studies, is that chronic pain is not pure nociceptive signal being persistent in the brain, but that there's a, a you know, humans come with a brain, and that brain has uh, uh, includes in it all your past experiences, your, your knowledge, your memories, your genetic lineage, all of those things create the, the priors in a sense upon which the nociceptive signals are going to operate. And, and, and so, uh, I mean, in our very simple summary, my one line summary is that chronic pain, the risk for chronic pain is a neurological, is neurologically based rather than nociceptive based. And, and so we, we think there's a huge component of chronic pain and pain in general uh, that depends on the brain properties. And so uh, brain properties and 
that in includes past memories, learning experiences, uh, emotional responses, emotional um, uh, perception of the self, all of those things in a way color the way a, a subject responds to an injury, to a stress, the combination of stress and an injury of some sort that gives rise to chronic pain. So can we leverage that information to improve the management of chronic pain? In a sense, if it is brain, if the brain is, is acting as, a, as, a, as an important component to the, to the state of being in, in chronic pain, then, then can we use brain signals uh, in, in a sense of interaction with the subject to then reverse that, that chronic pain? That's the general idea. Okay. And you said you're involved in a startup that's trying to develop a web platform. Yeah. So you can translate these findings we know into better management. Yep. Could you tell us a bit about the platform? As in, how do you think it could change a person's priors or change how pain emerges? Right. So, so, so the, the idea is it's similar, to, is, it, is exactly what I said, in a sense that uh, the, the system is being de is designed, um, in fact, I think we've already done one small clinical trial, we will begin another one very soon. The system is designed first to spend some time to assess the properties of, of any given subject who enters into the platform. Right? This would be all chronic pain patients, right? So cl chronic pain patient and, you know, joins in uh, this experience and and first we assess their their personalities, their their properties, the, their complaints, and that creates sort of an a, 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 an initial set of parameters, and then uh, the subjects go through a whole series of um, of uh, essentially tasks that they are performing, uh, and which these which change over time and which follow their their performance and so there is a close monitoring of the subject and trying to give them appropriate you know uh, suggestions directions what to do how to do it in a, in a sense and try to follow them over multiple months and with the single objective of decreasing their pain um, right. and continue uh, the system is continuously modeling that subject with all of these parameters and continuously trying to adjust these parameters to to see if we can uh, optimize that pathway in a sense and of course together with the coach with 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 social interactions and all those other things as well um so this is kind of the beginning of this of this of this um application and the idea is, in fact, when these numbers start increasing, we start modeling all of the data together and trying to further optimize the approach uh, by identifying, you know, uh, subgroups and their optimal and their best results in a sense that not only is the system providing a support structure, a continuous uh, uh, care of a, of a given subject, but is also learning from that to improve on it for the next patient that comes in. And okay. in that sense, becomes both a management and a discovery platform all at the same time. Right. That's really exciting. One question I have is, is the, the baseline measurements, are they all collected remotely or do some of these parameters and measures need to be collected face to face for this to work? We're in the pandemic age. Everything is remote. <laughs> so, and <clears throat> and in a way, you know, we've the the approach is to get away from these objective measurements right. and instead take the subject as the person that we need to work with to interact with. The subjectivity of the person is more important than all objective measurements that we come up with that are actually poor correlates of the subjectivity anyways. So we have, you have to trust the subject, we have to trust whatever the subject reports and work on that, uh, you know, based on a lot of what we know about which circuits are involved in what parts of these, complaints that they have, you know, so, so there is a science behind it, 
but the science is really trying to move away from you know all these brain imaging technologies and all of that instead center on the on the on the individual subject on the patient and the needs of the patient and and paying close attention to the needs of the patient and in a sense the system uh, uh, is learning from the patient and is guiding the patient at the same time so, so, so one advantage of this is that it, it can scale you know chronic pain right. patients we don't have enough physicians to take care of chronic pain patients on this planet it's just that simple in any society we just don't have the care that they need the the continuous oversight that they need is just not available so that's very simple need that needs to be to be addressed and remote uh, you know, app-based sort of technology can solve that very simply so that it can be scaled up. Uh, I mean, of course, the scaling up has its still issues that one needs to solve. But sure. <clears throat> anyway, so let me stop that. And you asked me the question. So it's a machine learning type model overall, would of, you say? Of course, there, yeah. is a, uh, there is a machine learning there's a learning component there's a discovery component in, within it there is a modeling of each individual subject there's modeling of groups of subjects based on their you know population properties in a sense and 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 so very simple i'll give you the the, the general idea and the details remain to be worked out this is a concept that i'm, that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the uh, you know, we have a, 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 a drug that we're trying to see if it has efficacy. We've been working on this drug for the last 13 years, okay? And we're still doing the clinical trials. And we're still doing the phase two clinical trials on the, on, on the, on the topic. Um, <clears throat> and the clinical trials, of course, come with a whole slew of inclusion and exclusion criteria to make sure that we are doing a randomized clinical trial. But that's very far away from reality. I mean, in a sense, even if those trials work, we have no idea when we bring that, that drug to, to the market, if it will, in fact, be successful or not, right? Because, you know, first of all, it's, a, it's an artificial condition. We do these randomized clinical trials. We create artificial bubbles within which we're doing science. And most 95% of the time, they fail when they go, they go to, to the to the population at large. Here, the idea is, in fact, the clinical trial is the subject doing it every day. So we learn from them, and in fact, uh, we cut out this you know long old sort of ideas of how to to do discovery science, and we do discovery in the natural environment, in the ecologically uh, you know applicable environment. And so not only are we, are we helping subjects get better, we are actually making discoveries that next group of subjects will, will benefit from it immediately, as opposed to 15 years from now or 25 years from now, a drug that we put in the market and, and then it fails. So this is the concept that I'm, I would like to develop in this lecture kind of thing. Yeah, which it's, is, yeah. it's very exciting. Uh, one, one question I have is, when the participant enters at the beginning and you want the baseline data, you're using the person's first person experience of their pain yeah. to, for the data. How does the person interact with the machine? So how does the machine elicit that information, that first person experience? Is it? We just ask them, how much pain do you have? How are you feeling today? Did you sleep okay? Uh, you know. Uh, what is your personality? Um, I mean, it, uh, and these are in, and these questions come over and over and over again. This is a continuous kind of thing. And then, did you know, uh, uh, you how many medications do you take? What kind? What time do you take what medication? And now, when you take this medication, did that medication help you at all? This data exists. It's out there people come with a huge amount of information and uh, and our research always ignores all of this, right? So yes. every bit of this information is both important for the patient themselves and for scientific progress in the field. 
that's sort of the general idea. Yeah, that sounds great. So do you think you'll have it more developed, this concept, by the time the Congress comes? I am hoping that by the time Congress comes, we will actually have data in N of 1,000 people that we would actually uh, have run and actually have some preliminary results with them um, in the next few months. Uh, um, assuming we will run our N of 1,000, we will start that study within the next month or so. That's, okay. that's, the, that's where we are. Uh, so we have the... the the startup is has already gone to one version of this of the system and have com completely revamped the system and and generated a much more i think efficient system uh, uh i think uh, from the viewpoint of efficacy i'm not very worried from the viewpoint of recruitment we we remain to fine tune the system so that we have we can rapidly ramp up and maintain people and show efficacy. Great. If you don't mind me saying, this is very different to your traditional background of the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So how did you decide to go digital, remote, web-based platform? How did that process happen in your mind? That Well, actually, that's a, that, no, uh, most, most good things in life are serendipity, right? Um, right chance events is is what happens i mean uh, 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 the ceo of this startup is now a good friend of mine we've now been discussing this for the last almost 10 years oh. and only in the last 3 years we decided to act on it but he is a he is a well established uh, uh, app developer in the in the medical field uh, himself um, and he's a chronic pain patient also. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and in a way, we after discussing it for multiple years, we decided, okay, it's time to do this. And it's, this is, and we've just, and part of the drive is very simple. And I've given hundreds and hundreds of lectures about which brain area is doing what and where and what is the circuitry. And then at the end of the day, someone raises their hand and say, so what? What have you, what, what, what has this done to society? And, you know, I have enough white hair that I need to make that jump and say, can we do something concrete with all of the data that we have collected over the last multiple decades? Yeah, it's, it's very exciting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing the results at the Congress. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. I, know. I mean, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, that's why it's a bit far. You know, the Congress still has, what, five or six months from now, or something like that. So I think yeah. there's just enough time that we may pull out our N of 1000 study. Uh, but these things, you know, who knows uh, in, in between what, what, what happens in between, right? Yeah. life remains very precarious nowadays so of course uh, yeah okay great Vanya we we'll leave it there that was uh, brilliant for those listening if you want to join us for our next EFIC Congress in Dublin in Ireland in April 2022 the good news is tickets are now available and you can see Vanya and others um, by visiting www.efic-congress.org to get your tickets thank you bye thank you thanks Mary bye bye